Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. We are talking about the question, how do I make DJing my career? I'm getting asked this a lot recently, and I remember once upon a time, it was something I pondered myself a lot. I asked a lot of DJs for advice and things like that. And in today's video, I'm gonna try and break down some of the best ways to really work towards making this your career. I was actually famously told once by a DJ who was on a big label, I'm not going to name it, that you must go and study sound engineering for five years if you want any chance of being a DJ. And this left me feeling very, very disappointed as I felt this was quite a unachievable thing for me. And it turns out that you don't need to go and study sound engineering for five years. But yeah, in today's video, I'm going to explain some things I think you can be doing to work towards your goals. So we're gonna look at DJing itself, making music, doing your own event, and also we're going to talk about social media marketing. All of these things can contribute towards building up more of a demand for your services, and then you can supply it. And the more demand you get, then there's gonna be limited supply, then you can start to charge more. Without a demand, you can't really justify much price tag on your services. But the more demand you build up, you can then start to charge more. And then when there's a demand for you to DJ every week, there is then not enough supply of you to go around. And that's how the fees start to go up. And it's very much an exponential thing, a DJ. Once you start to get booked every single week, the fees start to go like that. Because there is now more people trying to book you than days on the weekend for you to supply. And then up we go. So we're firstly going to talk about making music and how this contributes towards making DJing your full-time career. I want you to think of making music and releasing music as the top of your funnel. This is the best way to be discovered on a big scale. Music can travel to anywhere in the world with the power of YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, Beatport. You can literally release one song and make it. I remember in the early days of my DJing and production journey when I was working part-time, spending a lot of time in the studio but getting no real traction in this conquest to become an artist, I used to tell myself one tune, that's all we need is one tune. And we've seen it happen, people have made actually one song and they've then gone on to make a full career to this day, there is artists on the circuit who have made one good song. And when I say hit, I mean like big hit records and they've gone on to tour for years and years and years and still doing it now. It's not easy to make a hit record, but we are all only ever one tune away from making it big. And we should use that as something to encourage us and know that tomorrow could be the day. But anyway, I'm sat here in a position of, I've never made a hit record, I've made consistently good tunes, but not a hit. So the chances are, if you're watching this, you need to use the approach of building a consistent release schedule for three to five years. If you can do this, I think you're gonna have a good chance of being able to charge for your bookings. And I think there'll be a chance that people want to see you DJ. As we want to build up this demand and putting out good music usually means people then wanna go and see you play these records live in a nightclub. So I would use the approach of making lots and lots of music, having a direction with labels, and then trying to plan at least 12 months in advance with your music. And this is gonna give you a good chance, like I say, of building up people wanting to see you play. So secondly, your DJing skills need to be showcased online. You can do this via mixes on SoundCloud, Twitch, you could do a live stream on YouTube, something like that. In recent times, since the pandemic, I think, people have really started to do a lot of live streams and these can be visually more entertaining than listening just to a mix on SoundCloud. I'm sure we have all been in an after party where we've put a mix on and you kind of watch it in the background, things like that. I think mixes are a great way to show people your record collection and things like that. It is very much an art, recording the perfect podcast, but I think live streams can really offer a way to build an audience and create some engaging content. 
I know as a promoter, we have booked artists based on their high quality mixes. There is that kind of cult DJing circle of people who don't necessarily post a lot on social media, but they're putting out very good mixes, which give you a real flavor of what they're doing. If you've got no mixes out there, how can you expect anyone to book you to DJ if they don't even know what you're gonna play? So it's a given that you've got to put some kind of DJ mixes out there to the world. You don't need to wait for any permission either. With releasing music, you may have to rely on labels and their release schedule to sign your music. No one is stopping you from putting a mix out tomorrow. No one is stopping you from building up a monthly live stream series on YouTube, for example. This is something that's completely in your hands that you can do that I can't see how you wouldn't benefit from this. It requires work and requires effort and requires planning. That's often why people don't do it. But if you really wanna make this your career, then start to build something that's around mixes, live streams, that kind of thing. So another way to build up your profile in preparation for trying to get more bookings and make your career is doing some kind of event. This is an approach I took when I wasn't getting any bookings. I decided, hey, why not do something myself? The likes of Ender Siragusa did Fuse, Youssef did Circus. It's something a lot of the bigger artists have done and started off with their own party. It's going to give you the time to play on the decks. It's gonna give you experience in clubs and it's also going to allow you to book other artists and connect with other people. You can also offer people gigs at your night. You can maybe get a gig there. There's ways to do that. But ultimately, you are going to get exposure and content from your parties and hopefully build something organically, which can then help boost your profile. Events are great. There's a lot of work that goes into them. So it's probably one of the harder things to do. But in the long term, I think it's a great thing to have some kind of party. My tip would be to start small. Maybe one day we'll do a video deeper on events, but for now, I'm just gonna say that start off small, find somewhere with 50 capacity, that you can put your decks, your sound system in, and get going. So with all these things, you need to be able to market them to the world to have great effect. Many people are doing good things, but they are not executing any kind of marketing, which has meant in this hyper-competitive industry, they are not being discovered. With social media, it's now never been easier to showcase your work online, but this also means it's never been easier for the guy next to you to showcase his work online too. So that means we need to stand out online, and the easiest way to stand out online is just be consistent. Believe it or not, that is the hardest thing for nearly everyone, is just to do things consistently. I myself do not believe I am that talented at any of this music game really. I'm, yes, good at mixing, good at making tunes, but it's come from being stubbornly consistent with this whole thing and not feeling any kind of discouragement or overwhelmment, if that's a word, from this whole thing. I've just chipped away year after year, and that comes with the social media thing as well. I've just posted consistently on these things and then managed to build myself an audience. So many people wait until they release music to then start and trying to post online, but this is stupid. Why not try and build an audience on social media before this? And that means when the music's ready to be released, you've already got an audience there to listen to the music. It's the way to go. And I did a course, I created one called Amplify Your Audience, which you can sign up to via the link below, which is all about marketing yourself online with integrity. But to just to cut it short, with TikTok now especially, this is a golden opportunity for any upcoming artists to really build something around TikTok. People are getting millions of views on small videos in their studio. Get creative, there is no barriers to this and it's all about grabbing it yourself and going for it because there is a real opportunity at the moment with online space and really pushing things forward. Ultimately, all the things I spoke about in this video are great, but they need to be marketed well. And as you're watching this video, I'm using YouTube as a way to market my whole brand. And you can too, there is literally nothing stopping you. And often we look at other people doing things and say, I wish I could do that, but it's a matter of us going to do it and the time will never be right. The perfect timing will never come. You've just got to go for it.
And another great thing about social media is you can really connect with like-minded people. And one thing I've learned in this industry is that strength in numbers is important. The people you're connecting with now are the ones who will be rising with you when you start to make your break. My friends like Laidlaw, Local Dub, Miller, Casey Spillman, Adam Monty, people like this. We were all friends for a long time ago and I've known these for a, for a while through connecting on social media before then going to play with them, party with them, play alongside them, things like that. It starts at the bottom and builds up. So connect with as many people as you can and then support each other and things like that. And we talk about this more in my Amplify Your Audience course. So once you've done all this, you can hopefully start to get some requests for bookings. It will often happen organically. You'll start to talk. You are best off trying to make an effort to meet promoters, go to lots of parties. This is gonna allow people to find out who you are, what you're about. Genuinely being sound and being nice will open up opportunities to book places. Being a cool person, as in like being nice and pleasant is a simple way to get lucky. If an opportunity arises for any of my brands festival, I'm firstly going to think about the people that I actually like, you know, the people that come to the party who are cool, they're sound, they're not idiots. They're the ones that are gonna get the opportunities and it's a simple way to get lucky is just being a nice guy. And through all of this, like I say, being consistent is super, super important. You want this to feel like play. And Naval Ravikant quote is, it looks like work to them, but it's play to me. If you can do things that feel like play, no one else can compete. For me, I love making these videos. I love marketing on social media. I love making music. I love digging. It's not effort to me. I genuinely enjoy it all. And if it feels like work to you, you can't really compete with the guy it feels like play to. So in this, you need to find fun in what you do, find a pleasure in it and enjoy the ride. Because honestly, today is the day to enjoy it, man. If we wait for these moments and we wait for that gig at DC 10, if we wait for the 1,000 subscribers, well, 100,000 subscribers to be happy and enjoy it, I'm telling you now, now is the time to enjoy it. I had as much fun when I was starting off this journey as I do now. My first gig at Sankey's is still my favorite memory from any gig I ever played. So this idea that things eventually get better and eventually get fun is wrong. Enjoy it now. So you may be thinking about things like booking agents, things like that. Honestly, these are minor things to worry about. As a booker myself, I think having an agent too early can actually add friction to the whole process. Booking agents charge a booking fee, so until your fee is a reasonable value, having a booking agent may actually put promoters off from booking you. I'm talking about this from experience. Um, experience as a booker and experience of someone who joined a booking agency maybe too soon. I think you can best off do it yourself or get a friend to set up an email with a booking email and they can do it for you. But I would not worry too much about having a booking agent in the short run. But anyway, this is a long game, not a short game. And if you really wanna do it, you need to be prepared to be committed for a long time and be consistent. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, just pop them below. I'd love to have a discussion with you all. Please like, please comment, please subscribe. And I will see you all next time. And if there's any other topics you want me to cover, please comment below. Oh, and don't forget, if you really wanna get good at making music or start making music, I've got Syntho, the Electronic Music Club, changing the way you learn to make music, and there'll be some links below to sign up to everything. Peace.